For months, they've been landing in airports around Africa. AstraZeneca, Sinopharm, Sinovac, and BioNTech Pfizer. <laughs> How nice! But they're at the back of the line, and it's not nearly enough. The death rate will continue to increase. You see the foot, the feet, and the sick wave, and it will be extremely difficult uh, for us to survive as, as a people. Less than 3% of Africans have been vaccinated. Every dose made outside the continent. But could that be about to change? Welcome to our COVID-19 special. I'm Monica Jones. Good to have you with us. Can a vaccine factory in Senegal be the game changer in Africa's fight against the pandemic? In Dakar, the Pasteur Institute is preparing to produce COVID-19 vaccine. It's a first in Africa. And production is set to start in 2022. Not a moment too soon. People are pinning their hopes on this man, 52-year-old Amadou Al-Fassal, director of Dakar's Pasteur Institute in Senegal. His work is crucial to both Africa and the Western world. There's a lot at stake, a coronavirus vaccine made here in Africa at the Institute. We can manufacture in Africa, for Africa, would actually be a key uh, actually drive about ending this epidemic. But also this asset can be used to prepare other pandemics and be able also not only to talk about COVID or to be used for epidemic response and control and to be used also for future pandemic. And that's why such a project is absolutely strategic to make. There are about 300 employees at the Institute. Most of them are local scientists and virologists. They developed a coronavirus rapid test almost immediately after the outbreak of the pandemic and export their tests to numerous African countries. Coronavirus is plowing through Africa. Virtually no one has been vaccinated. The industrialized nations secured most of the vaccines for themselves. And there's a lack of other necessities in parts of Senegal as well, like masks and disinfectant. But Africa desperately needs sufficient vaccine supplies for the benefit of Africans and the entire world. New virus variants can emerge at any time during the pandemic. The Pasteur Institute is all too aware of that. Only 3% of Africans have been vaccinated. They want to start producing vaccines themselves as soon as possible. We cannot get access to enough COVID vaccine for Africa. So if you can make it here, it would be available for Africa. The second reason is we have experience. We've been doing vaccine for 80 years. And in Senegal, you have not only the capacity to do vaccine from raw material up to the delivery. That's the only country in Africa that have it, that is pre-qualified by WHO, meaning that they meet the highest standard you can have when it comes to make vaccine. It's too late to save themselves from the dangerous Delta variant. That hit a virtually unvaccinated population in Africa and spread fast. The WHO reports that 16 African countries are now experiencing a huge increase in the number of new infections. And for more, I'm happy to welcome Dr. Amadou Al-Fassal. He's the general administrator of the Pasteur Institute in Dakar. Good to have you with us. The first question after watching this report, of course, do you know already which COVID-19 vaccine you're going to produce there? Yeah, actually, um, thank you, first of all, for having me. Actually, our choice has been to make sure we have an approach by platform which allows us to do at least two technology, one which is going to be viral vectors and another is going uh, messenger RNA. So we'll be able to do at least these two technologies. The reason why we choose that is that given the evolution of the epidemic, we want to make sure that the vaccine we are going to make will be relevant, particularly in the light of the virus. So these are the choices that we're doing and we're discussing with the different companies that have this technology. And is this one of the reasons why it will take until approximately uh, mid-2022 uh, that you will actually be able to start producing whichever vaccines you're going to produce then? Um, the timing of the vaccine manufacturing is linked to, to different factors, not specifically on the vaccine you want to produce. Uh, the main driver of this is obviously time is of essence. We want to do that quickly. But as you may know, there are different pieces, the regulatory, the manufacturing per se, the human resource and the facilities. 
it does imply that we need some time to get all that aligned. Now, this is the first uh, for Africa to have a COVID-19 vaccine produced on the continent. How will producing this vaccine locally change Africa's fight against the pandemic? I mean, obviously today, if you look at the main purpose we are facing now is uh, controlling the epidemic in Africa, the availability of vaccine, because obviously uh, Africa have less than 2% of this population, the target of being really uh, uh, vaccinated because of the lack of vaccine. So making this available would be really in line with the African CDC and African Union and WHO to which is at least 60% of the people. And that's why actually having the vaccine in Africa, manufacturing in Africa and for Africa is critically important. Yeah, and those 60%, if I'm not mistaken, the goal is to reach the 60% uh, of uh, the population being vaccinated by the end of 2022. That would give you and your institute only about half a year, actually, uh, to get enough vaccines uh, done. Is that doable? I think the objective is to get that as quickly as possible. So that's why I think it's important for us to be ready in 22. Uh, but also beyond that, this platform will be used also for other vaccines. So it's not just about COVID. It's first the priority is COVID. And given the fact nobody really knows how the situation is going to evolve over time, I think it's the target of 22 is important, but it may go beyond. And if for some reason the COVID is finished by that, uh, period, then the same platform can be used with a different technology to do other vaccine, to be ready for the next pandemic, for epidemic disease, but also uh, disease of the expanded program of immunization that are immunizing all children in Africa. Right. Well, <laughs> It would be great if COVID-19 was finished by the end of uh, 2022, of course. Uh, but uh, how, what about distribution? I mean, we know that sometimes it's, it, it's really difficult already with, with, with other medication, other vaccines, to actually get them distributed across the continent. Uh, what measures are put in place in order to ensure that your vaccines will eventually reach all the people? Yes, the measure is uh, that, as I said, this is a continental approach where all the different people uh, are the needed piece of the puzzle are being assembled right now. And uh, not only the vaccine manufacturing, but also the context of distribution, which is which is being organized with the uh, different Ministry of Health right now, and this is part of the plan. And also Africa CDC and uh, African Union and all the different groups are actually working specifically with different countries to do that. And one number is today, 80% of the vaccine that have been given to Africa, to COVAX or different channels, are already being administered. So there is somehow some background work that's existing, and uh, immunization has been done in Africa for years, so I think the resource is going to be there and going to be expanded to make sure that this happens. Well, fantastic. I wish you uh, all the best uh, for your COVID vaccine uh, production program, Dr. Amadou Al-Fassar, General Administrator of the Pasteur Institute of Dakar. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Well, the fact that COVID-19 vaccines exist at all is close to a miracle. Which brings us to one of your questions. Over to Derek. We came up with vaccine for COVID in under a year. What do developments like that mean for the future of healthcare? COVID-19 vaccines represent an absolutely immense achievement. Uh, in the midst of a raging pandemic, governments and pharma companies and scientists came together to produce vaccines at lightning speed to fuel the biggest vaccination drive in history, which is now progressing at an astonishing pace. Um, additionally, the coronavirus ha has triggered an, an absolute avalanche of research that's already having ripple effects on areas far, far beyond healthcare. Um, SARS-CoV-2 has promoted even closer cooperation between uh, science and industry, while at the same time revealing glaring weaknesses uh, in healthcare systems. It's also exposed um, the many, many ways that it's possible for governments to mess up communications with the public. Despite all that we've gotten wrong, though, I remain positive overall, and, and I think that history will look back on these years where, where so many lost so much as, as the first time 
that humanity came together on a global scale to, to fight a problem that threatens us all. COVID-19 has sparked advances in a really wide range of fields, but I want to focus on one advance in particular that experts say will change healthcare in fundamental ways, um, and that's messenger RNA technology. Uh, in cells, mRNA is the molecule that allows information from the archive of the genome to be turned into, into the physical metabolic reality of proteins. And, and controlling and tailoring proteins is a tool of incredible power. Uh, scientists have been trying for decades to harness the mRNA information system to fight a huge range of diseases. Uh, then the pandemic hit and, and all that hard work ended up turbocharging the development and the launch of the mRNA vaccines now in use, uh, the first ever to be approved. That's released the floodgates, I think, and, and we can expect more vaccines based on the platform to hit the market in the next couple of years, uh, including highly individualized vaccines that, that help your immune system, for example, zero in on cancer. Uh, Mastering mRNA will allow us to shift treatments for many diseases away from today's approach, which is to, to mitigate symptoms with medications, and towards addressing the real roots of diseases. And that's huge.